Okay, uh, good afternoon. So let me uh, start by recalling a little bit what was the purpose of uh, the today's lectures. And so I, I mentioned a, a theorem uh, due to Bonatti and Crovisier, which says the following. says that you can, essentially, you can split the space of uh, C1 diffeomorphisms as a disjoint union, as these are open, C1 open and disjoint. in such a way that uh, diffeomorphisms which are here have a trapping region and diffeomorphisms which are here are almost all of them or at least a dense subset of them are transitive. Okay, so we had this uh, dichotomy. So I, if F belonged to O1, we knew that there existed a trapping set that mean, meant a proper open subset of the manifold which is compactly mapped inside itself. Okay, and we discussed uh, at the beginning which, uh, th that this had certain implications. And otherwise, we could approximate our diffeomorphism by one which was transitive, meaning that it has a dense orbit. So if there exists she uh, inside O2, she delta dense, such that for every F in she, F is transitive. Okay, so th this was quite nice because, in principle, all we knew was that the, the non-existence of a trapping region only implies a very weak recurrence that we called uh, chain recurrence. But transitivity is a, is a much more interesting um, recurrence property. However, the, 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 the downside or, or what we would like to do is try to remove the condition of having to restrict ourselves to a residual subset. So we were wondering about the abundance of robustly transitive diffeomorphisms, meaning is it possible to change this Xi delta subset of, of this by an open and dense subset of uh, O2? And so what I wanted to explain in this afternoon lecture is one partial result in this direction, but, uh, which makes certain assumptions on partial hyperbolicity, and so it fits uh, very well in the in the subjects of, of this mini course. So this is a theorem uh, shown with uh, Flavio Abdenur, Sylvain Crovisier and Martin Sambarin. And the point was uh, to show that the set, I, I will make some remarks afterwards, the set of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms with central dimension one, this meant that the, the dimension of the central bundle was equal to one, can, can be split into disjoint open subsets, so it's essentially the same statement, but instead of asking for a residual subset here, we knew that every diffeomorphism here will be transitive, okay, if F belongs to 
u1 and trapping set. Or if f belongs to o2, then f is transitive. Okay, and so what we did in the morning was to discuss some possible approaches that allow one, on the, on the one hand, to, to show that certain transitivities are robust, are uh, robust and perturbation, and also how to promote uh, weak recurrent properties into uh, stronger recurrence properties, such as transitivity. And we mentioned that the, the, there were two ingredients. One had to do with certain robust geometric conditions on the invariant manifolds, and the other one was to try to apply arguments similar to the case of the Anosov diffeomorphisms. But so le let me first make some remarks. So here, I'm saying partially hyperbolic C1 diffeomorphisms with center dimension one. I will focus mainly on the case where uh, ES and EU are both different from zero. Okay, in our definition of partial hyperbolicity, we allow one of these two bundles to degenerate, but uh, I, I will make arguments that make use of both foliations at the same time, so we, we will assume that both foliations, uh, both bundles are non-zero. In any, in any case, if you have an extreme bundle which is one-dimensional, there are other arguments, uh, mainly due to Pujals and San Marino, that allow you to obtain the same result, uh, essentially. So it's, it's, no, it's no loss of generality to work in this context. And so let's uh, recall a little bit what were the, the ideas we, we were working with. And so let, let's start with the context. So F from M to M will be uh, globally partially hyperbolic diffio with a splitting like this. And this dimension equal to one. <coughs> and so we are going to say that, and this appeared in the morning lecture, that defoliation The strong stable foliation has property SH, SH as a shorthand for some hyperbolicity, if it verifies the following property. If um, for every sufficiently large strong stable disk, R, if there exists R bigger than zero, and lambda, lambda uh, bigger than one, say, such that every disk of the strong stable foliation, which has sufficiently large ra radius, um, has, the, uh, has the following property. So R, C, has a point. X such that for this point, the center direction behaves as a stable direction, as a true stable direction. So this I can write it like this. So the minimal expansion of the derivative of F to the minus N in the center direction. So let, let's do only one iterate. It's larger than lambda, which was larger than one. 
they forget about G. Okay, so this is a, a property that we checked in the morning for a specific example, okay? So we had this Magnes example where we made a, per, a, a local perturbation around a fixed point, making that the center direction, which originally was a stable uh, direction, turned into a neutral or non-hyperbolic direction, but that, was, that happened only in a small neighborhood. So if we took a, a long arc of stable foliation, we would find some points where the center direction was expanded. Okay? So in a, in a certain sense, this seems kind of a, a tough uh, property to have. But one of the points of, uh, of our work is to show that this property is quite abundant. Okay? It's, not, it's not as tough to check as, uh, as one may expect. So some comments. And uh, which are exactly the same as we did in the morning, so remarks. The first of all is that the fact that this foliation varies continuously with the diffeomorphism, particularly disk of a fixed radius, and the fact that the diffeomorphism, uh, if you make a C1 perturbation, this uh, number does not change very much, means that this is a robust property. Maybe it's hard to obtain, but once you get it, all perturbations will have this property. Okay, this, this is a C1 open property. And the second remark is that, okay, so you have a disk over here of large radius, and you have at least one point x where the center bundle is, uh, is expanding, okay, in the, in, for backward iterates. So th this happens in a neighborhood, okay? This is uh, continuous. And so as you iterate backwards, this neighborhood will again contain a disk of radius r. Okay? So because this, as you iterate backwards, this disk is getting larger and larger, and so you can apply the same property once and again until you get uh, so a, a property that holds for all, every iterate. So let me write it like this. Um, if the stable manifold has the SH property, then for every disk, In the stable, there exists a point in the disk such that the derivative to the minus n in the center grows exponentially fast. Maybe you, can, you have to change it and get this lambda a little bit smaller, but essentially it's, it, this is the property you get by applying this property once and again. Okay? Iterate backwards and you find this open set eventually contains another one and you get this uh, to apply this again. So you, you need to change this lambda to a certain sigma, but this sigma is larger than one. Now, <coughs> why, why was this interesting? Because we have this uh, argument that we used for a loss of diffeomorphisms. But we had an open set here, another open set here. Ah, the, you take a disk of certain radius. Okay, the, the, the property you demand is that every disk of large radius has at least one point with this property. By continuity, it has a, a, an open set of points with this property, okay? So as you start iterating backwards, this set of points which expand will, uh, will have another small open set here which expands in two, two iterates, okay? So let me assume that you are expanding more than three times 
in the stable direction as you iterate backwards and that this is like two or something. So you have a point here, it's expanding in one iterate and then this ball contains another ball of radius r and then it expands again and then it does again. So maybe it's not an open set of points that have this property, but at least you will get an, an intersection of uh, closed sets which have this property. Okay, it's a, for those who know, this is a property which is very related to what they are called blenders or some. They're for only n bigger than zero. Okay. In any way, in any case, what what uh, we need is something, some property that allows it allows us to do the, this argument we did in the morning. We had a, a neighborhood here. We started iterating forward this neighborhood, and then it became close to the unstable direction. We iterated backwards. This, this set, and then it became close to the stable direction. But now if we are in higher dimensions, uh, these two sets might not intersect. Okay, you have, imagine during the whole talk, you can imagine ES has dimension one, and EU has dimension one, and therefore you have, this open set is becoming close to a line, this open set, as you iterate backwards, is close to a length, so they can miss. Okay? You might have uh, this figure. So we need a certain property of expansion in the center direction so that we can make the, uh, this set grow as we iterate backwards. Okay? That, that's the reason we need this kind of property. Unfortunately, it's not so easy to to finish only with this property, but let me explain a little bit more what uh, type of argument we are going to do. Yes, this sigma is larger than one. So I'm iterating backwards, and it's, um, this is n, sorry. Okay, uh, of course you can say the same for the unstable manifold and whatever. So the, in the morning, we did an argument to show that uh, Manier's example was uh, robustly transitive, which essentially can be summarized in this proposition, which is due to Pujals San Marino. And says the following. Suppose that the unstable foliation is dynamically minimal and that the stable foliation has the SH property. Then, F is robustly transitive. Okay? So, um, how was this argument? Uh, well, I'm, I haven't defined what an, uh, the dynamically minimal foliation is. But a minimal foliation is a foliation for which each leaf is dense. A dynamically minimal foliation is one for which the orbit of each leaf is dense. Okay? So the idea of the proof, so let me recall the idea, was that we had Something like this. We have the open set U, the open set B. We started iterating U in the in the future. So this this, this is for F is robustly transitive. So you took C C1 close to F, and so the minimality of the unstable foliation 
was not preserved by perturbations, but at least we could manage to have epsilon minimality. Okay, so the unstable foliation of she by continuous variation is epsilon minimal. And so as, as we iterate this set U, it becomes at least epsilon dense in the manifold and very close to the unstable direction. And so now, all we want to do is to try to iterate backwards the, the set B and try to obtain a disk transverse to the unstable direction which has radius at least epsilon. Okay, so we want to iterate B backwards so that it contains a, a center stable disk of radius larger than epsilon. If we get that, we are done because it will intersect the set U. Okay? So we, we will have the existence of an iterate such that Fn of U intersects B, which is equivalent to transitivity. And to do this, what we use is exactly this property. Because inside B, we do have a stable disk. And as we iterate backwards, we, we know that at least for one point here, we have expansion of the derivative. And this expansion has a, a uniform behavior. It, it holds for every she which is closed. And so we get that the stable direction is getting larger and larger. And around this point, at least, we have, let me make the drawing, we have this disk. It's a center stable disk. Now we have the stable direction. So as we iterate backwards, we get that the stable direction now is very, very large. But at least at one point here, x, we know that the image of this center is more or less of size, say, 2 epsilon. And now the pre-image of the disk we had here will be something that may be very small here, but it contains something which is big, at least somewhere. And this is enough to intersect the forward iterates of U. Okay? So this, this was the, the, the argument we did this morning. And in fact, uh, this is the argument we use to obtain uh, this result. But uh, for the purposes of this lecture, let me explain a, a, a small generalization of this uh, condition that also allows you to get um, robust transitivity and which allows us to make a symmetric argument. So I, in fact, we need to do two arguments, one to show that one of the two foliations is minimal and then to show that the other one has this property SH. So I, I will, instead of doing this, I will show that every foliation has property SH and I, f I will forget about this. And this uh, is just an extension of this, it says the following. So if, and this is related to a, a work of uh, Alien Herrera and Ana Tercia, which says that if F is transitive and both the strong stable direction and the strong and stable foliation have the SH property,
then f is robustly transitive. Okay, so, so it's, a, it's a similar criteria. It's a little bit more complicated to prove because it's, it's in the same spirit as what we did this morning with a of diffeomorphisms. In the, for, for this morning, for a of diffeomorphisms, we said, if we are transitive, we have an epsilon dense orbit. Then, if you are an OSOV, you have uniform size of stable and unstable manifolds. So you iterate this forward, you, you get something. Uh, let me do another drawing. Again, this, the same drawing. Have U, have B. So this morning, we used the ANOSO property. We iterate this forward. We get some uniform size. We iterate this backwards. We get some uniform size in a transverse direction. And then we used an epsilon dense orbit to, to take this set here. And they, uh, so that they intersect. But if I, if I wanted to do this here, I would be cheating because I know sometime it will get bigger, but then it could become smaller later. And so it's a little bit more delicate, but it's possible to prove this. In the, in the, the spirit is the same. So that's why I'm asking for the SH property for both foliations. So I gain dimension in both sides. And uh, it's a little bit strong. That's, that's all I wanted to comment. And now, let me try to explain why this property or this hypothesis are abundant in in this context. So now, now I is is the the moment where I will try to obtain a certain. Uh, geometric property of the foliations that will guarantee that we have uh, this condition. So, so unfortunately, this argument uses some things which are not so related to the things we are doing in the course. So I, all, I will only explain the things which are related to what we did and only comment on the rest. Okay, so let me explain the, the geometric property we use. Let me make some definitions. So, lambda inside them, this, this was defined by Sylvain yesterday, uh, is a strong, say, uh, unstable. All, all the definitions I will make are symmetric, okay? So uh, now I, I will stick to unstable lamination, but everything is the same. Lambda in M is a strong unstable lamination if it is compact, F invariant, and saturated by W U leaves. Okay, and so we are going to, to be interested in minimal laminations like this. So as you, you have inside the, the set of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms, so the, the unstable foliation is over there and it accumulates at certain parts. So we are taking the minimal sets of accumulation and we will say that 
lambda inside them, uh, if it is, is a minimal uh, strong and stable lamination, If it is non-empty, and every street a strong and stable lamination inside lambda is empty. Okay, you have a compact saturated set of uh, saturated by unstable leaves, and you're, if it has a compact a, a subset which has the same property, I will take this one, and then I will make a, a minimal procedure. Okay, uh, every strong unstable lamination will contain at least one minimal strong unstable lamination. Notice that. For strong and stable lamination, I'm also asking invariance. So this is kind of related with the dynamically minimal. Okay, it's not minimal as lamination, but minimal dynamically. Okay, but so the remarks. The remark is that every strong Unstable lamination contains a minimal one. Okay, and now I will uh, express a, a, a geometric property of unstable laminations. We say that a uh, strong and stable lamination is uh, transverse if there exists a, a number r sufficiently big such that uh, such that for every unstable disk inside the lamination, of radius bigger than r. Okay, so so I said that you could imagine that the unstable direction was one-dimensional. This means you take a, an arc which is large enough. If it's higher dimensional, you have to take a disk, but it's the same. You have, in each of these disks, you have two points which have this behavior. So let me, let me draw it first, and then I, I write. So you take a, a very large disk. Since the manifold is compact, this la large disk uh, will pass nearby. And what I will ask is that it has this image. So you will have two points, x and y, which are connected by a strong stable direction. And here is the place where I use the fact that the center dimension is 1 to, to speak about transversality. What I will do is, once these two points are connected by a same stable manifold, I will project one leaf into the other one. So I have here. a center and stable disk. And when I do the projection, I will see something like this. Okay, I, I draw it like this because this projection is only continuous. But what I want is that the projection is topologically transverse. Okay? So for every unstable disk, there exist points x and y in d, u, u, which belong 
to the same local stable manifold and such that the projection along stable manifolds of the local and stable manifold of Y uh, is transverse to the unstable manifold, the local unstable manifold of X. Okay, meaning that it will intersect both connected components here. So, so this, uh, why, why do I say this is a geometric property? Because in principle, this, fo this foliation has a, uh, has a certain color dimension, and it could be that uh, this projection would fit exactly here. Okay, this is, this is the case, for example, in the linear and also diffeomorphism. When you take the linear and also diffeomorphism, essentially the strong and stable manifold and the strong stable manifold form an eigenspace for the torus. And so when you saturate, you never see this geometric property. Okay? But now that I draw this, I, I hope you believe that this is more or less an abundant property. Okay? So the, the fact that this will not uh, project tangentially is more or less a good property, uh, abundant property. Uh, that said, let me make the, the disclaimer that it's not so obvious that this will be the case because, for example, when you look at the unstable and the center, when you project, they really fit together, okay? Because the center stable bundle usually is more integrable than the stable and stable. Okay. Okay. So let me now explain the key steps in the proof. The first uh, result we prove is a perturbation result, essentially saying that this property will hold with quite uh, some abundance. So let me write this theorem. There exists a Xi delta dense subset of partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms with one dimensional center such that for every f in she, in she, she delta n subset she, um, and lambda a strong a minimal or no well, let's put minimal strong and stable lamination, we have that lambda that there are two possibilities. Either lambda is transverse, which is what we want, or uh, lambda is a quasi-attractor, which we defined the other day, implying the existence of a trapping region. Okay. So let me just, I, I won't uh, explain the proof of the theorem but let me just say a few words on the ingredients. So 
the, the proof has, has essentially two components. The first component is a perturbation result which can be seen as a localized version of uh, Dolgopiat-Wilkinson result I mentioned this morning. Okay, so if you, if you look this carefully, this is quite related to the property of accessibility we were talking about today. So if you go with a, an unstable direction, then you move along the stable, you move along the unstable and you go back along the uh, stable, then you come back in another place. Okay? And this is related to being able to go everywhere by, by making jumps along stable and stable direction. The thing is, to, to prove this accessibility, it's enough to make some places where you can move up. And then uh, you can just go from one place to the other using uh, some density or, or whatever. Here, we need this result to hold inside a minimal set. So we really need to control the continuation of this set. Okay, we, we have to make the perturbation, but, but af, as we make the perturbation, the set might move, and we, we still want this property to hold. But unfortunately, we are not able to obtain this property. All we get is a certain non-integrability result. So to get a non-joint integrability condition on lambda. Okay? But then, what we are able to do is to show that if we don't have this transversality, then we, will, we can show that the set has to be an attractor. A study carefully this to show the dichotomy. So I don't say anymore. Okay. So this this is the the main result, and this is the perturbation result that allows us to obtain the, this transversality. And then the second result we are able to show is the following, and which strong and stable lamination, then there are three possibilities. One, either lambda is the whole manifold, so the, the, the unstable foliation is dynamically minimal, which is more or less good, or lambda satisfies 
the SH property, which is the thing we wanted. Okay, so, or essentially the idea is that if, if you're, so very, very briefly, the idea is that if, you, if your lamination does not have many points which expand in the center direction, then you should attract. Okay, and you get that lambda is an attractor, a quasi-attractor. And then you have a trap instead. Okay, so now I wonder why did I state this here? Okay. So in fact, what we need is this. But this, this was just, so to really prove this theorem, we need to use the transversality. But uh, I could have uh, forgot about that. I don't have time to explain this. So let me, let me just finish the argument uh, using this result. Okay, still with another perturbation, we get this following consequence. Uh, let f a partially be a partially hyperbolic with center dimension one transitive and in a she a she delta dense subset then every minimal WU saturated set has property SH. Ah, yes, and now I remember why I explained the transversality. So my point Okay, this, this follows by a further perturbation, okay? So this one is not a possibility because I'm assuming it's transitive, so it doesn't have an attractor. This one would be good. It gives you a SH property. And finally, you have uh, this other condition, okay? Uh. But then there is a further perturbation that allows you to create what, they are, what are called blenders and generate this SH property for the, the minimal set. And so the, the, the point is that now what do we have? We have F is transitive. We have that this, the every W U uh, minimal set verifies the SH property, and every apply this applied to F minus one, you get that every uh, W S S minimal saturated set has SH property. And we want to do the same argument we did before. Only that now we only know that this SH property is verified 
in minimal sets. And then that is why we will use the transversality. So let me make a drawing. So, okay. The same drawing we did today. We want to show that a perturbation of f is still transitive. So we have the set u, we have the set v, and we want to iterate this set forward to see it grows both in the stable direction and in the center direction. And we want to do the same when we iterate this backwards. So uh, what happens when we iterate u forward? This becomes closer and closer to the unstable foliation. OK? However, we don't know whether the unstable foliation has points which are expanded in, in the center. What we do know is that every minimal set has this property. But we know that minimal sets have this structure here. So as you iterate the unstable manifold, it will become closer and closer to, to the leaves of the minimal sets of the foliation. And this transversality forces the intersection with the stable manifold of some point of the minimal set. OK? But then, since in, in this foliation you have points which are expanding in the center, the same will happen for some points that are here. OK, so that's uh, a brief reason why after some iterates, which depend on the open set, you will get some big open set in the center stable direction. And then you will do the same for the path for B, and you will get the, the intersection with a similar argument. So I, I'm sorry it was a little bit messy. I will, I will finish with the idea of the proof now. And to end, I, I, I would like to pose some questions with respect to this robust transitivity, which we still don't understand, even in the center dimension equals to 1. So the first problem which has uh, already quite a long time is uh, does there exist a robustly transitive partially hyperbolic diffio with one dimensional center such that the derivative of f along the center is an isometry okay, or is, is bounded. OK, so uh, as we said, the mechanism, the geometric mechanism we used to obtain a robust transitivity was to, by some perturbation, create some expansion and some contraction along the center direction. And that's why we, we managed to iterate things and obtain big disks in every direction so that they will intersect. However, when you have a partially hyperbolic diffio where the center direction is an isometry, we don't know whether there are or there aren't examples uh, of robustly transitive systems. So the, the, I should mention that the, there is an indication that this might not be the case by some work by Ishii, which is also based on some previous work by Bonatti and Gelman.
Okay? And finally, uh, another problem which I like a lot is whether there exists some isotopy class and thus exist an isotopy class of diffeomorphisms uh, of of a three manifold uh, partially hyperbolic diffeomorphisms with one dimensional center such that or an isotopic class of diffeomorphisms such that every partially hyperbolic diffeomorphism in this isotopic class is transitive. So this is another thing we don't know the answer and a, and a natural candidate for, for this would be the isotopic class of an also in T3, but for the moment we have no idea. And so thank you very much.